no use of a remote control there straight straight into the seat <laughs> traditional me i've got i've got no um, gadgets to do this this is purely done on a mobile phone <laughs> so you just see me walk into shop there and just sit down welcome to harold road the man cave the loft this is modeling monday i've taken a day off work today to do some projects with you no well I'll say projects with you i'm going to be trying to fit a flashing LED light to the class 56 you know the stored one the one that caused a lot of controversy last week um, I'm not sure whether it's gonna work so I won't do that one on camera but I will do a step-by-step -step guide if I can get it to work because obviously that class 56 I want that to be towed around on the main line and obviously if it's being towed on the main line it needs a white uh, one of them flashing tail lamps so I'm gonna have a go at that later on but that won't be a video. The video you're going to see today is a layout update. We're going to be taking a look at the stored locomotive that caused such, such, oh, controversy. I can't even say the word. Controversy. Controversy? Where am I coming from? Yeah, it caused a lot of stink. But that stink actually was great because it boosted Harold Road so much in the last seven days. Um, I gained 500 new followers <laughs> and people who don't even um, follow model railways just sent me messages saying do you know what I love what you're doing I'm gonna stay around and see what you do so yeah that controversy was all down to you guys you guys out there the top fans the people who comment the people who like and the people who share all my work right so it's down to you if it wasn't down to you sharing and commenting and doing all this spreading it all around Harold Road would just be a normal model railway layout but it's not because of you guys and I know I've said it before I'm a little bit sort of creepy when it comes to that like oh, he's thanking us all again but I do mean it I do mean it from the bottom of my heart I do mean it because it's all down to you guys so as I say we're gonna have a look around the layout this morning we're gonna have a look at those stored locomotives have a look at some new stock that I've got um, bought quite a few trains recently trains models yeah what do we call them model locomotives um, we're gonna have a look at those but first we're gonna have a look at the graffiti locomotives um, I'm gonna put one on the workbench you can have a good look around it and then we'll have a look and I'll show you how I did the techniques okay so bear with I've got to get up again and turn you off to go to the next stage because I'm so old-fashioned I don't have any kind of remote control so today modeling Monday with me John at Harold Road So let's start modelling Monday with the controversial Class 56 which was graffitied. Ooh, caused a lot of stink, didn't it? Anyway, here it is on my weathering turntable for you to have a look at. Let's have a look at it in a bit more detail. So the model itself was a non-runner, uh, had various issues with its PCB and the motor uh, was seized. So I decided to do something with it, and that was to make a stored locomotive that you would have seen um, in sidings, or still see in sidings to this day. But obviously when locomotives are stored in sidings, they get attacked by pe uh, people with spray cans. I'm not gonna call them vandals, I'll just call them graffiti artists, because I don't think they're vandals. If they're attacking something which is stored and the vehicle's gonna be scrapped, I don't have an issue with it. No, I'm being controversial again, aren't I? So anyway, um, the locomotive was weathered, made to look stored, and the graffiti was added. Now the graffiti comes from Railtech transfers. I did not do this freehand. I don't have the time to do something like this. I took inspiration from stored class 56s at Healy Mills that had graffiti on them. Um, we've got an open doorway here with a uh, blow-through pipe so the locomotive can be shunted around by another locomotive that's actually got air brakes. Um, yeah, it was an enjoyable uh, project to do, and I knew it would cause a little bit of stink. But I've had to do it, and I've done another one since, and you'll see that in a moment. Uh, I've done this one in a Class 47. I'm going to go through a few things that people ask me. How did you do this? How did you do that? Right, okay. The streaking, as you can see here, all the way along here. It's literally white enamel paint, and all you do is you dab it along the top and wipe it down. This, is, this causes streaks. It's as simple as that. It's a simple technique, but it's very, very effective. I know some people have messaged me saying they can't do it. 
they can't get the streaking effect but the, 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 the secret is to use a lint free cloth a lint free cloth will give you that streaking as you drag it down you're dragging it down slowly slowly so slowly. you're doing it in sections I only go about half an inch wipe 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 down so I get that desired effect if I want more streaks I'll add more paints and I'll drag it down but it does give if you can see here I'm just showing that footage, you can see where the streaks make it look like the paint has faded this is as I said it's as simple as that and it's the same with the roof you don't do the entire roof you do it in, you do it halfway and just keep dragging the paint to the edge and that's white paint and then on top of that white paint I then added a uh, roof dirt that's just literally uh, matte black and matte leather mixed together I don't go and buy that expensive stuff that you can do I make it myself I make my own track dirt so we're using literally white paint, brown paint, and black paint. This is simple, as I say, simple technique. Wipe it down, done. And then you go to Steve at Railtech Transfers, and you say, "Yo, Steve, I want some uh, graffiti." Go to hit, go into the search bar. Lots and lots of graffiti you can choose from. That's Railtech Transfers. That's the only place I'll go to get my rail and get my transfers from. That's Railtech. Um, little bits of rust. I put a little bits of rust on there. That is literally. Uh, enamel paint just dabbed on stippled on if you stipple it it gives you that rust effect and I'll show you that rust effect on the class 47 I'll show you in a moment so that's basically the class 56 um, graffitied and weathered simply by using white paint and what I call the drag down method so let's move on to the uh, class 47 I'll just get that ready for you so after the controversy of the class 56, I told you all I was going to do another one. This is on the Facebook page, or Harold Rose Facebook page. I thought, as people were complaining about graffiti on graffiti locomotives, I would do another one. And this is the result. This now, this one is not a runner. This is simply going to sit on Junction Road stabling sidings as a condemned locomotive that's been there since the late 1990s. Again, the techniques I used were roughly the same as the Class 56. Literally, it was... I started with the roof, again, halfway along, dragging the white paint to the edge. As you can see there, it's quite effective, isn't it? I did the roof, and then I did, again, white paint all the way down, dragging on, doing it in sections again, just about you know, half an inch, drag down, drag down, drag down. You can't really see the um, white drag on here because I've added a lot of rust. Again, the rust dabbed on at the top and dragged down. I wanted this graffiti tag to look like it's been on there for ages. So I took it to the edge there with the rust paint and then dragged it down. Again, an old depot plaque was there. I masked around the, there used to be a diamond um, Tinsley plaque there. I masked an area around it to make it look like the plaque's been removed. You can see a straight edge there and then painted that section and then again dragged it down to make it look like rust has fallen. This cab, this end, rust, more rust down there. Uh, on the roof, as I said, white paint and then drag, 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 drag either side. Then you put your rust into all the areas you think there's going to be rust showing. So I'm going to take you off the tripod now and then we'll have a good look at the roof and you can see just how much detail has gone into it. So here we are looking at the end. I'm, you're free hand filming now. Um, you can see the drag method that I'm using on the roof. So the loco has not seen any action for years so I've made it to look as if it's been stored for ages. It's literally white paint and rust coloured paint literally on the roof it, it's it's a stunning way to do it and it really does make the locomotive look worn and stored and you can see down the side here the rust that I've put I had to give it a fictional number because um, otherwise I had the river countenance coming after me saying oh that 47 never looked like that so, <laughs> so this one is 47 um, 320 I don't know if that <laughs> locomotive actually existed but obviously someone's gonna tell me later on um, I do get it, honestly. I get people telling me off all the time. Yeah, that's not right. You did that wrong. That look, look, look right. You can have a look at the roof there. Look at that. There you go. 
I mean, you're going you're gonna to see rust in all these little areas, um, uh, sort of around here, along there. It's where water will, will ingress and it will collect. Again, I just stippled it on and wiped it off. It's as simple as that. All I use for this, uh, this project on this loco is white paint, rust paint, a lint-free cloth, and some matte varnish. Now, the matte varnish is the key to this entire project on these stored locomotives. Let me just try and find it for you. There it is. I'll put it on top there like that. This is the baby that makes it look so faded. This is AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish. And a big shout out to AK Interactive there. Free advertising. Uh, yeah, you put that in your airbrush and literally that is that is the secret of making this look so worn and faded. Because if you don't put that on there, it's still going to look all shiny. So adding the matte varnish really does make this model stand out. So there you have it. There's the two... Uh, stored condemned whatever you call it locomotives that caused so much controversy on the Howard Road Facebook page last week so let's now move on to some new additions on the layout okay so here we are uh, we're going to start at Junction Road stabling sidings because we've got some new stock to show you so it's been a while since I've done an update so I'll just show you what's new um, some of you who follow the Facebook page will know that we have did 66200. That's a new uh, a new commission I did. Um, made the roof look all um, paint peeled and uh, etc. So that, that's new. Uh, 065, 66065, that's new as well. Uh, weathered that one just straight out of the box. We have got uh, 37309, that's new. That's uh, Pride of Crew. The one locomotive I really wanted, I've actually got my hands on. That's the uh, 57307. That's Lady Penelope. Uh, 57302, Chad Varar. That's new as well. And this was a purchase. I just had to have it to, to like um, drag stock around. And that is the Hornby uh, 50049 Defiance uh, with the proper nameplates from Railtech Transfers. Moving on, we have got Acura Scale. As you can see, it's fresh and minty straight out of the box. Haven't done nothing with that. That's 37606. That will be weathered uh, very shortly. And this one came into uh, my vision the other week. And this is a Hatton's 66404. I do like the Hatton 66s. I'm probably going to have to do the modification on the bogies to stop it wobbling. But um, again, that's new. In the background, you can see what we were looking at earlier on. That's the Condemned 47 and 56. So that's a look around Junction Road stabling sidings. So we'll now take you on a layout tour. I know we've done a tour before but lots of you want to know the full um, view of the layout. So I'm going to move you around to the beginning and then we'll go all the way around to the other end. So we start at Harold Road Station. There we go. Two platform station. <laughs> a busy station for what goes into it. Uh, next to the station is King's Freightliner sidings. As you can see, there's a few um, 66s and a 47. I don't know how that 47 got in there, but uh, it is in there. Uh, there we are, various 66s in the stabling sidings. Next to the stabling sidings is the fuel point for K King's Freightliner depot with uh, a 66 plonked on it. Let's just have a quick look over the back here. You can see the station in detail. Now I have put some signals in here as you can see, uh, they're all wired up and they all work. That's the station building and then we'll now work our way out of the station, no, next to the station before we move on. We've got two sidings, that's Harold Road Station sidings, you can see uh, EMR 153 stabled there. So as you can see that the track goes out of the station and around the corner. So let's go around to the top of the corner. So the uh, station is literally just in the top left corner. There's the EMR 153. I've got to. Uh, I've actually got to weather that one. And it's actually named John Batley. I don't know why I named myself after a 153, but uh, you know, that's one of them things. Just plonk on anything. Then we've got the network rail boys all working around there. Then we work our way around to the corner, and then we've got the 12 foot area of junction road stabling sidings there you go so you get an idea the station is over there the main line 
it comes around and it sits next to junction road stabling sidings. Work our way down, we've got all the signals in place. Then we come to Beeston Junction, it comes around the corner here. Hang on, let's just a little bit of light on the subject. There we go, that's a little bit better. Um, this is Beeston Junction, where it goes off towards the fiddle yard. Literally just after here, this big bit of wood here, there's a little bit of section there, then the fiddle yard. I've still got to build the fiddle yard. I've got so much to do. So this is Beeston Junction in detail. Another question I get asked, what track did you use? And I'll tell you, I just used Pico's, Pico set track. There is a few streamlined bits in there, but I can't be bothered to make my own track. I'm going to be honest with you. So um, I just used Pico set track. All right. People do complain about it. Well, I use a set track for them, but it works for me. It's simple to lay, and I want this layout to be as simple as possible for those who want to give it a go themselves. Because if you are a follower to the Facebook page, you know that I do step-by-step -step guides on how to do things. And if I make it complicated, then no one's ever going to get into railway modelling. So I decided to make Harold Road so simple that any normal modeller can have a go themselves. So there you have it. That's a, a tour and a walk around of Harold Road. You've seen how it all works, seen the track plan. So we've got, I would say, dimension wise, from the fiddle yard, we've got six foot along here, then we've got 12 foot along the back, and then you've got another, uh, you've got another kind of eight foot into the King's Freightland Sidings and Harold Road Station. So hopefully, for those who haven't seen Harold Road before, you can see um, all the detail now. Um, I have been concentrating quite a bit recently on just getting some of my rolling stock weathered. So I have got quite a lot to do, especially up at uh, Beeston Road. I've got lots of um, detailing still to do. All my colour light signals all work and they all correspond. So to the switches I put them in. I don't know what, half the time I don't know what switch I'm throwing because I haven't labelled them up yet. So I've got to be a signalman at some point and label everything up so I know what <laughs> what I'm flicking and what I'm not. So that's your video uh, part one for Modelling Monday. So that's a detailed look at Harold Road, look at some new stock. And um, of course, we'll bring you more today as time progresses. Hopefully I'll get time to do some more today. I have got some little jobs to do. Um, <laughs> that don't involve railway modelling but hopefully I can do another video later on uh, today on possibly I'm going to try and do a little bit of weathering for you so that'll be a, a bonus for you uh, so until later on thanks everyone who's uh, supporting Harold Road I do appreciate it I do, do try and comment on every single comment and uh, that you give me and uh, I do appreciate everybody following Harold Road so for now I'm going to say goodbye because I'm going to go and have a cup of tea and a bacon smidge and hopefully I'll have time to do another video later on on a little bit of weathering. So until uh, later on, take care guys and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.